Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here. Thought I would sit down and do a video for you guys and gals, but let me give you guys a bicep shot first. Oh, Mount Bicepius. All right, speaking of boring stuff, everyone is always afraid of boring. Have you noticed that? People who struggle with fitness are always worried about what's boring and they're always trying to find ways to get around it. Uh, and the, the simple fact of the matter is, oftentimes that's nonsense and marketing and gimmicks. Because realistically, if your goal is to get really fit, if you really want to be in that, say, top 1% of the population in terms of fitness, you don't worry about what's boring. Uh, because boring actually works. And in other words, the things that most people say, oh, that's really boring, that's what produces results. And, and furthermore, needing to be excited all the time is going to hurt you. Uh, because if you feel the need to be excited or motivated all the time, and you can't make consistent progress unless you do, you're probably going to fail at this because you're focusing on the wrong things. You're focusing on all that motivation. And as I've said many times, it is habits that build discipline. And discipline is what gives you results because it's what gives you consistency year after year after year after year. Okay? So I'll get my shirt getting a little wrinkled up. Let me fix that. I'm good for the camera. So people want that excitement and it's harmful to your results to to actually pursue it uh, the things that work are basic dieting okay eating pretty simple foods consistently day after day in, in other words and we'll get to the training in a minute in other words people who need to fit their macros like the whole flexible diet of eating if it fits your macros group it, it's really actually anti-science uh, again probably its own video topic because the science says that eating a less diverse diet usually creates better adherence to a calorie deficit longer. More food variety actually means you're more likely to not be consistent and cheat on your diet or to fall off on the calories, okay? Whereas in people who just eat fairly consistently the same things, like the old school bro method, how many guys got really lean and jacked just doing simple chicken and rice type diets with cheat days. In other words, instead of working in daily variety or even trying to track every macro, what did those guys do? They ate mostly whole foods with lots of protein and they consistently ate it because they always wanted a lot of protein. Those sort of guys and gals would do stuff like, well, I need to get my whatever, two grams of protein per pound of body weight, two pounds of chicken a day or, or lean steak or whatever they use or fish or whatever. We'll give them about 200 grams. They'd shoot for that plus their protein shake. Okay, that already covers a baseline of protein and calories. And then their filler calories are the things that they would eat every day, chicken. If they wanted to gain weight, they would add more rice. If they wanted to lose weight, they'll produce rice. So, and, and I meant to say rice there, not chicken. They would do rice, chicken rice vegetables or whatever lean meat rice vegetables. And they just controlled that without even tracking calories. It's like, well, if I want to gain weight, I need to add more rice. If I want to lose weight, I'll take some rice out. That was their calorie control. And it's very easy, very consistent. You could change spices and seasonings or sauces day to day to get different flavor. And they keep it basic. And then when they need variety, a lot of times people very successfully, and I've seen people get ripped doing this over the decades, they'll have a cheat day. Okay. Works perfectly fine. Or a cheat meal. So if they're like every Friday or every Thursday, if it's Friday on leg day. Okay, this is a common one. Friday is leg day. Have a cheat meal. Go ahead and eat, have a cheat meal. That's where you get your junk food every week. Nobody's getting fat from one cheat meal. It's two and three cheat days in a row. Nobody's even losing results in a fat loss phase by having one cheat meal on a schedule, particularly if it's at, say, the end of their hardest training day. They're just replenishing some calories. It's fine. This is people have been vastly successful doing that and got six packs and 350 pound bench presses. Okay, forever. Boring. And it works. That's how you get fit. 
And again, instead of needing the excitement day to day, they save it up. Well, let me get that, that one big cheat meal on that night. We go out and dinner or whatever. Done deal. Training the same way. I need 37, I need above the knee rack pulls, I need booty bands, I need whatever burpee, kipping flop up, super set, circuit training, whatever it is people think they need, right? All this nonsense. I know that made no sense because people just come up with random crap. What works? Consistent progressive overload, okay? Progressive overload on your basic movements, month after month, year after year, adding supplemental work to bring up your weakest links. I don't care whether those weak links are performance or aesthetically. If you need more biceps, you probably want to throw some extra preacher curls in. See how easy that is? Boring. But it works. It works. In fact, I, I could give you guys some of the most boring workouts ever right now. They don't even take that much time. Do a three-day push-pull legs. Three-day push-pull legs. Monday is your chest and push day. Pull on Wednesday, come in and do your legs on Friday. Build the whole thing around bench, pull-ups, squats, deadlifts, and a bunch of accessories. You know, laterals, curls, calf raises, whatever it is that you need. Just progressively overload on those for months and months and months. Train hard, focus on progressive overload. Does it work? Yeah, it works. Get your body composition on point, it'll get you jacked. Methods have worked forever. You don't have to periodize anything. Most periodization is done for psychological reasons. It is not physical. There is no physical benefit to periodizing your training. It's all mental. And there can be certain mental benefits to it. But if you don't understand that, then you don't need to be writing your own periodization. And I'm saying that as someone who has written quite a few heavily periodized programs. It's all psychological. But we come back over to all this stuff. This stuff is all boring, but does it work? And here's the thing, do you care? Like, does it need to be exciting? If a person wants to get to their goals and they say, hey, I want a certain fitness, I want to look a certain way. Do you need to be excited or you need to just come in and do your training or you just need to eat your food? When people need to be excited by their, their routine, this is when they fall off. These are the people who are going to stick it out because they're focusing on the wrong things. As soon as you accept, look, this is just part of what I do. Come in and just train hard. It just becomes your normal. You need to be excited and just get it done. You can enjoy it. Obviously, we want to try to enjoy it, but sometimes it's going to be boring and that's okay. Same with your food. Do you want to look good or not? It's very straightforward. All right, guys, well, that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative, and I'll talk to you guys and gals 